Hey guys, Bubba here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple menu. Um, I've made a little bit of an example here, so let's see how that works. Now this menu will respond to either the arrow keys or to the mouse, so I can click or I can hit enter. Whatever you prefer. Um, it's pretty simple really. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to define a menu options table, which is going to contain all of our uh, all of the data about each menu option. Um, all that we're going to define right here is we're going to define the text that's going to be contained in there and the color. Um, color of course, color is not necessary, but I'm going to do it in this tutorial. So the text here, let's just do menu option one, keep it simple. Color, colors dot blue. Let's do the same here. Uh, color dot orange. And it's cyan or cyan, I think. Anyway. Uh, we need to find out how large our terminal size is, so go ahead and do that. We'll use this in just a second. And we'll do our first function, which will be the menu draw function. And it will take the selected value, so we know which one to use these on. And we're going to define the Y position that is going to start out. So that'll be term y divided by 2 minus the number of menu options divided by 2. Um, that'll put it nice and centered. And we will increment this every time that we go through this for loop. Index data in pairs menu options. All right. We're going to now. Um, now, keep in mind that since we'll be clicking on the menu options, or we'll have that option available to us, we need to know where exactly on the screen they are stored, or where they are printed on. Um, so for that, we are actually going to go ahead and modify the menu options index dot bounds. So I've just created a new table with bounds. This is the same as me going in here and adding a table within a table within a table again. So a three-dimensional array. Um, but I'm doing it here. And we are going to specify the x1, x2, and y. X1 is going to be the leftmost, and X2 is going to be the rightmost. So this is going to be equal to term X divided by 2, subtract the length of the data dot text, divided by 2, um, sorry, not divided by 2, plus 4, because we're going to have the selector things on either side or we're going to have two spaces on either side. So it'll be plus four each time. Then we're going to divide by, that by two. This will be the same except that we'll add it. So that'll give us the rightmost bound. And this is going to be equal to Y pose. Okay. And next we will do uh, set text color data dot tech sorry data dot color and term dot set background color sorry we don't need to do that actually never mind set cursor pose data dot bounds dot x1 data dot bounds dot x dot y sorry and we're gonna go ahead and write text. And now I haven't made this variable yet because I forgot to do it. We need to define a text variable because we can have if the item is selected then we want to draw this on either side. 
Otherwise, we just want to have the empty space character so it's aligned properly. The way we're going to do this is we're going to say if um, the index equals selected, and then we're going to have that option. Sorry, not text. Data dot text, or um, spaces data dot text. Now I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this kind of syntax. You might not be, but essentially what this does it evaluates the validity of this. So index if index is equal to selected, that's going to evaluate either true or false. If it's true, it's going to say okay let's do this first one here because I have the and so it's going to append these characters otherwise if this is false it's going to go ahead and skip over to this one and add on these empty characters and then we're just going to go ahead and write it the next function that we need is the check click function and that's going to take the x and y coordinates and we're going to go through the entire table again. Uh, and pairs menu options do. This will be pretty simple. If x is larger than or equal to data.bounds.x1 and x is smaller than or equal to data.bounds.x2 and y is equal to data.bounds.y then return index and we're going to return false otherwise because it's gone through the entire thing and it didn't find one so it ended the for loop and it will just return this value now we can work on the main while loop uh, we need our select variable we'll initialize that at one while true do we're going to want to display first so draw menu selector and before I forget let's uh, clear the terminal actually set the background color first let's change it to colors white and I'm gonna draw that menu and then we're gonna pull an event and now I put it into a table the reason I did that is because I find it easier to just write this than to have to write out a bunch of variables like get the event and the data one data two I don't like that I prefer just to store it inside of the table so if e1 that's the event name else if e1 is equal to mouse click okay if it's a key if it's the down key then we are going to want to increment the selector because a larger selector value means it's going to shift down so we're going to want to say selector equals selector is less than a number of menu options and selector plus one or one so what this does is it says okay if selector is less than the number of menu options or less than three then we're gonna go ahead and add one to it otherwise we're gonna set it at one so that it goes back up to the top else if e2 equals keys dot up then I'm just gonna end this else if so I don't ever forget going to do the opposite. If selector is larger than 1 and select so yeah, selector minus 1 or 3 or number of menu options. And then the last else if e2 equals keys dot enter. And I misspelled this here so make sure you don't misspell anything. 
then we're going to actually just break out of this loop and we're going to continue with some code that I write later. The mouse click is also pretty simple. Uh, the value that is returned by check mouse, or sorry, check click, E3 and E4, and that's the X and Y coordinates. Uh, if there is a value, if it does not return false, that means you have cl indeed clicked on something. So we need to s set the selector to something, to that something, and break out of the loop. Um, so out here, we will clear the terminal, set the cursor position to 1, 1, and write what we have selected. There we go. And I know because I have recorded this before and messed up that I should check over my program, and I just did, and there is indeed an error. So if you come back up here to where I define the menu options dot bounds, um, you'll notice that I forgot to put some commas in here. Very important. Make sure I did it here too. Okay. You could also use semicolons, but you need to do it for each one, and you cannot mix and match semicolons and commas. So let's go ahead, and I probably should have done a little bit more error checking, but draw menu menu draw. Why did I call it menu draw? I don't know. That's okay. And one more thing. We need to increment... Ah, we forgot to increment Y position after we are done drawing. There we go. Let's give this a shot. Voila. One, two, three, boom, Let's see, and clicking, perfect. It won't detect anything outside of those boundaries, and it's colored correctly. I hope this tutorial helped you guys, and if you are struggling to understand anything, go ahead and shoot me a message or a PM on the forums or make a comment below, however you guys want. Um, just please leave me a comment and let me know what you think of this tutorial if you want any more tutorials or if you think I could do something better please 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 tell me I want to know thank you for watching